Hey, how's it going, everybody? Gabriel Santiago here. This is the Speaking of Harmony podcast, and this is episode 22. Um, first of all, thank you so much for everybody who came down to the um, to the hang yesterday, you know, last night, the uh, live. I did on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere. So thank you so much for the questions and comments and feedback and interaction. You know, it was really, really great. Uh, you know, don't hesitate to uh, leave uh, questions on the comments, not only on the live, but also here in our regular uh, podcast, because I can definitely address some of those in these episodes. I just did uh, last episode on one question that a uh, subscriber left as a question. So don't hesitate to interact and ask questions, and I'm, I'm glad to, um, you know, make videos about that, right? Thank you so much, and uh, before we go into that, to our episode of today, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the little bell thing notifications, this is all my social media stuff, and give it a like on the video if you can, it helps a lot with the algorithm, and don't forget to sign up for the mailing list, link description here, and the video down here. Thank you so much. So uh, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, I gotta be moving files again over here since I'm gonna be playing uh, through some audio. So bear with me with that. It's kind of like the perks of, you know, playing with good audio, leaving good audio for you guys, but also I have to like be cautious of the file because it's gonna mess up the, the, the link and the syncing, right? So um, how do you guys deal with uh, odd bars, you know, when you comping, basically? It's kind of like focus on, on comping on this episode. Like how you comp on a 5-4 bar, on a 7-5 bar, you know, those are some uh, interesting bars to play with, to jam or solo or comp, but there's always a tendency to kind of play in a certain way, using tunes like, you know, like take five, you know. You know, the whole one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, four, five. Like everybody, I see a tendency most of the time of people trying to comp like this, like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, right? There's always a, a, a sort of an urge to accent that four and the five, and it gets, you know, the same kind of routine every time. So I try to kind of get away from that. So that's what I would love to share uh, with you guys today, right? Let's say an odd bar, let's say a samba in three, it's a, kind of an odd bar for samba, you know, because you have... get like um, a samba in three for instance how how do you do with that you know so you gotta like basically locate you know some some points within the bars and the grooves the accent and and some of the ones that you kind of get away from it you know, because then you're gonna get to the, you know, the, the take five thing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, right? So, this is kind of the default, right? It's like accenting like those pretty obvious four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's what usually people tend to do, and that gets old really quick, you know? So, what are, what are the things you can do to kind of get away of that and, and comp like in a different way, right? Um, I'm gonna use this this tune of mine that I as in five that I have been playing so many times in so many different ways as an example of how how I do it you know I'm dealing with like a really kind of funky but in five groove you know I got this little loop here that it's kind of similar to the groove in my song I'm gonna be linking the video here in the description so you can check out how the song is because the song is already designed melodic wise and harmony wise to get away from that right instead of doing right you know the song is um the, this is the chorus basically right so this is d minor ninth e minor ninth go back to d minor then e minor right then d minor e minor then b minor f sharp minor right so all minor chords right but the melody is already set up in, in a way that it kind of gets away from that four or five, you know, thing. So it's... Lots of syncopations and daughter, you know. So you 
it, it gets away from that already. But the comping, I'm not comping like right? I'm not doing that. I'll show you what I'm doing and there's like two ways I can approach that. One way is just kind of like um, uh, like just a basically basic arpeggio, you know, just kind of arpeggiating uh, the chords and not is like grooving but getting away from that 4-5, right? So I'm gonna get this um, this loop thing here so we have an idea uh, the loops gonna come down and then I'll show you what I'm talking about right we locate the down beats and then I'm gonna show what I'm doing here so here's the groove the tennis is like Just locate the downbeat. Okay, a groove like complex as this, you're gonna get out of the way, basically. Now, arpeggiating just a little bit, just leaving a note, you see the effect. So you see that I am getting away from the that gets very busy in a groove as busy as this one is already you want to kind of get out of the way so you see that I was doing just kind of located the downbeat and then I did just this little arpeggio thing that even in this groove and this comping there's all this complicated stuff and then I put in the chords I'm leaving this note kind of connecting everything hashtag voice leading see even here and then I did more complex stuff so like a more com complex arpeggio but I'm still Arpeggiating everything, right? Um, but when it comes down to actually that the groove, see, I'm introducing like a syncopation figure. Giving this feeling of like a halftime kind of groove, like and that's where I put my snare in the groove that I wrote for the song you hear when you hear the song. Those are ways you can use to kind of get away from that. That's kind of the standard because people are so used to that, you know, takes take five stuff, you know. Um, so that works also when you are soloing. Also, the approach for like improvisation when you're soloing over this groove, like you know, on D minor, E minor, D minor, A, D minor, E minor, B minor, F sharp. 
sharp minor. So I'm gonna solve a little bit over that as well, so you can check it out. Um, the approach doesn't change, the approach is the same, right? So if you're on a solo over five, especially a complicated groove like that, you don't wanna be doing like, you know. Uh, kind of like you're comping like the four or five right four if you don't want to do that you want to get away you want to do syncopations and cross bars and stuff like that of course you got to practice it enough that you feel the five and you don't need this four or five because basically what happens is that most people need that to give them a sense okay where is one right so they need their reference four or five mm -hmm. then four or five they need that reference so if you get that natural enough you know within you in your body feeling the five you don't need that so then you can like accentuate the different parts of the beat right i'm gonna solo a bit over that and try different things so you can see take a look at that okay here comes the groove again there you go one two three four five 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 beginning one two three four five the minor the minor D minor, A minor, D minor, B minor, B minor, F sharp minor. So if I do, it's like four or five, right? So I want to get out of that, right? One, two, three, four, five. I was getting away all the time from four or five right and since I was comfortable enough with the five I just kind of did cross bar stuff longer phrases that kind of like get one bar then crosses the bar into the second bar so I finished the phrase like midway to the second bar and start accenting like on the third beat or second beat you know or half of one of these in between the beats right those are kind of strategies that you can use to kind of get away from that four or five or you know one two three four five six seven the same thing for sevens fives and sevens are the most um you know ones the, the ones that we actually have that kind of default you know four or five or six seven uh, that kind of like support that we need to kind of feel the tempo so it's basically because we don't we're not comfortable enough with these odd meters as we are with like fours and sometimes threes and stuff so I would say get used to that, like feel the time, internal time, and then trying to get away from four and five, or in this case we, we're using, right? Trying to get uh, syncopations going, pauses, you know, and on this case the groove, just arpeggios. Start with some arpeggios, start just like getting down beats, you know, and then eventually start the arpeggio thing, you know? And then trying to like groove, getting away from the four. And the whole halftime thing. See, it gives a sense of a halftime kind of feel, but we're in five, right? So those are some strategies you can use uh, to kind of play around with uh, odd bars, right? Odd meters as well. Um, so I hope you like that. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the little bell thing, the notifications, and this is all my social media stuff. Don't forget to sign up for the mailing list, and I see you in the next episode. Thank you so much.